If you've given up hope, you no longer believe that you can find victory in your mind. I, I want to promise you that is a lie from the enemy and you absolutely can walk in freedom. Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. Today I want to talk about the importance of gaining freedom in your mind, uh, winning the battles uh, that we fight in our minds. And for a lot of Christians, this is a really big deal. Uh, some of us can really get stuck in bad places, sometimes for days, for weeks, months, years. Even for some people, this can rage on for decades. And for a Christian, that's a really frustrating place to be because the the Bible talks about us being more than conquerors in Christ and being overcomers and walking in victory. So a Christian who finds themselves in mental defeat, making the same bad decisions over and over, uh, it, it becomes a place uh, that is very discouraging. And I want to give you three keys today that come right out of God's Word that will give you victory. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. So let's dive into what the Bible says when it comes to winning the battle in your mind. So the first key to winning the battle in your mind is to renew our minds with God's truth. Listen to what Romans 12, 2 has to say. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The Bible teaches us we have to saturate our minds with truth. This is something that King David did, and he did it with a specific reason. In Psalm 119, 11, he says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Uh, David memorized scripture, and it was more than just the act of memorizing. He was dwelling on God's word and truth with the primary motivation that he would not sin against God. He was doing it in a relational manner. He was learning to conduct his life out of the truth that God had revealed to him. And this is what it means to renew our minds. It is to expose our minds to the truth of God and to adjust our lives accordingly. So as we're exposing our minds to God's truth, what's going to happen is God's word is going to expose lies that we've believed and incorrect and faulty thinking. And it's going to give us an opportunity to address that, to course correct. And the key to renewing our minds is that when we find these things, as God's word reveals those things to us, we admit that to ourselves and to God. And it, it starts the process of confession. God, I've embraced a form of thinking that is out of alignment with your truth, your ways, your values, your priorities, and your purposes. And I'm confessing that is wrong. I'm turning from that. I'm no longer believing that. I'm no longer going in that direction. And now I'm embracing the direction that your word has revealed to me. This is the power of renewing our minds. Not only does it establish the foundation of truth as we live our lives for the Lord, but it begins to uproot the lies and wrong thinking that we have embraced. This is the first step in overcoming strongholds in our mind and winning the battle in our mind because it begins to weaken the strongholds that have developed there. Now, this leads us to the next two keys, which are found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Let me read this passage to you. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So let me talk about what a stronghold is. Uh, in the military sense, a stronghold is like a fortified place. It's protected. Uh, you, you can't penetrate this area. Uh, in the context of the mind, it's where the enemy has come into our minds and, and introduced a lie that we have accepted, embraced, believed, and now it's altering the way that we live, make decisions, and think about life. And we, we are instructed by God's Word to tear down strongholds in God's power. Uh, so let's talk about how we do that. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So the first thing that we need to do is destroy arguments and lofty opinions. These are layers of protection uh, around the strongholds in our mind. Arguments are reasons, justifications, uh, we're, we're giving excuses for why we're believing 
and living the way that we're living, why we're making the choices that we know are wrong. It's a pattern of thinking uh, that leads us into sinful behavior on a regular basis. Uh, so we need to get rid of any argument that would justify in any way or keep us from the act of repentance and coming before God and saying, God, what I'm doing here is utterly wrong. It is rebellion in my flesh, and I, I confess it as sin, and I am forsaking it. I am walking it away. I am not going to continue in this behavior. Now, lofty opinions are, are things that we come up with, lines of reasoning where, yeah, we understand that God's Word says that we're supposed to do it this way, but we have convinced ourselves we've come up with a better way. Uh, a, a way that's a little different than the way God would have us to live. And, and to think that we have come up with a way to approach life that is better than what the author and creator of life has instructed us to do, that's lofty opinions. That is high thinking. Uh, that is a place of pride. And as we know, the Bible says that pride comes before the fall. We've got to uproot all arguments, all these lofty opinions, these wrong ways of thinking, and take down the protective barriers that are around the strongholds if we're going to actually destroy the stronghold in our thinking and have freedom and victory in this battle in our minds. So the second key is to take our thoughts captive. Well, what does the Bible mean by this? Well, we have patterns of thinking that are strengthening the, the strongholds in our minds. So first of all, we need to cut off the access point. So if there is a stronghold in your mind, let, let's say that you struggle with, with lust. You need to be very careful what you're giving your mind access to. What are you watching on TV? What are you accessing on the Internet? What are you watching on your phone? Where are you allowing your mind to wander and drift? How are you looking at things? A and we need to start to sever those access points that feed the stronghold. So once we've cut off the access to the kind of thinking that fuels the stronghold, we need to break the stronghold's power. Now, this is really critical that we do this. We need to take the stronghold that exists in the dark and bring it into the light. If you have any kind of secret thinking, uh, if you have uh, thought patterns that uh, you're the only one that knows what's going on, whether it's negativity, hopelessness, isolation, uh, it could be a thousand things. But we need to take that thought process, those thoughts, and bring them out of the darkness into the light where they will lose their power. James 5.16 says that if we confess our sins to each other and pray for each other, we will be healed. Uh, these, these strongholds lose their power when we drag them into the light. In Proverbs 28.13, the Bible says, Whoever conceals their sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces their sins finds mercy. Listen, the Bible is clear. If you're going to battle your thought life privately, all by yourself, in your own power, you're going to continue to fail. If you really want to break the power of the stronghold in your mind, find a trusted Christian friend and bring that thought process, those thought patterns, out into the light from the darkness. And when you've cut off access and now you're breaking its power, you're going to really start to find that you're making forward progress in this battle in your mind. So that leads us to the third key, to obey God's Word. Once we have started to saturate our minds and renew them with the Word of God, and we've cut off access, uh, and, and we're taking our thoughts captive, now it's time to start responding to the Word of God, and that stronghold is going to lose its last grips in our minds. Listen again to the verse that we're pulling this from in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Here's what we have to understand. God's word is meant to be transformative, not informative. We've already read that from Romans 12, chapter 2. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, not just informed. We have to respond to the truth that God gives us. James 1.22 says, Do not be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. So once you renew the mind on a regular basis, you're taking your thoughts captive, you're cutting off the power to that stronghold, and now you're responding to the truth that God's give, given you. 
you're going to find that you're going to start to begin a new cycle, a new pattern of behavior. And this is going to be opening the door to freedom, to victory, becoming the overcomer that the Bible says that we were created to be. Now, let me remind you that freedom is not the absence of struggle. The, the sinful nature is always going to be a battle, but freedom is the absence of slavery. There's a big difference between struggling with sin and being a slave to sin. There's always going to be a battle going on inside, but freedom is winning those battles regularly, walking in victory. Slavery is just living in a state of being defeated over and over and over falling into those cycles and thought patterns that lead to the same behaviors that lead to a sinful lifestyle. This is living in defeat as a Christian, and it will make any Christian utterly miserable. Remember, Jesus said in John 8, 32, the truth will set you free. So hang on to God's truth as we've talked about this today. Make a place in your life where you are renewing your mind daily. Take captive the thoughts that come into your mind and respond in obedience to the light that God has given you. And you're going to find that stronghold that has been dominating your thinking for so long is going to lose its power and you are going to be able to walk in victory. If this is something you want to dig a little bit deeper into, I've included some helpful resources in the, in the links below. Uh, some great authors, Louis Giglio, uh, Jenny Allen, Jada Edwards, uh, some really good authors that dive into this very specific topic. And uh, I, I want you to have victory. God wants you to have victory. And you must believe you absolutely can have victory in your life. Refuse to believe the lie that you cannot overcome the strongholds that have been established in your thinking and behaviors in this life. It simply isn't true. Hey, thanks for watching the video this far. Down below in the description, there's a link. If you want to join our community and receive weekly emails that will give you resources and helpful information to grow in your faith, just go ahead and click that link below and we will get you plugged into our community. Thanks again and God bless.